So uh, I'm going to be telling you today about Coda. My name is Isaac. I'm the CTO at O1 Labs, which is a company that's developing Coda. Um, and uh, you know, uh, well, this is modeled on my own wallet. You can see my Clipper card and my AAA card, uh, et cetera. But um, Coda is, is a new cryptocurrency protocol, which is very cool because uh, it, it's it's really easy to to basically uh, fully verify the state of the blockchain. It only takes a kilobyte-ish of data rather than the hundreds of gigabytes of transaction data that you usually need to look at. Okay, so yeah, what, what is Coda? Um, Coda is a new cryptocurrency. Um, it uh, is the first cryptocurrency that has you know, what, what we term a succinct blockchain. Um, what is a succinct blockchain? It's, it's a blockchain that uh, is compressed. So it's some kind of witness of the validity of, of the current state of, uh, uh, of the world, you know, how much money everyone has, what transactions have occurred, and so on. Um, but, but it's small and easy to check. So instead of being uh, hundreds of gigabytes and growing linearly with a uh, number of transactions that happen, um, it's, it's very tiny. So it, it, I mean, it, it sort of depends where you draw the line on what's part of the blockchain and what's not, but it's, it's on the order of kilobytes. Um, so uh, you know, what's really cool about this, you know, kind of what's the upshot here, um, is it's a cryptocurrency which is scalable uh, without sacrificing decentralization. So you know, usually there's this kind of tension between uh, scaling and, and decentralization in the sense that if you scale to higher throughput, you, you make verification of the current state less accessible because the resource requirements are higher, which increases the centralization of verification. And uh, the techniques used in Coda basically subvert this, this usual tension. Um, and in fact, I'll show you, uh, it's really cool, like this used to be just a slide, but now it's real. You, you can check the whole blockchain even on a mobile phone. I'll show you my phone later. and. Uh, I'll show you the URL that you can go to to do it on your phone, too. Uh, OK, so uh, let's start with a little tour of cryptocurrency. Um, this is a, a drawing of cryptocurrency. Well, you know, one version of it anyway. Uh, and, and the usual way things go is uh, you have uh, your, your miners uh, or, and full nodes who are really uh, directly interacting with uh, the database of accounts. Um, and you know who are maybe uh, you know nice or not so nice or maybe not so nice but kind of greedy so they pretend to be nice for a while um, and then you have your your end users who are uh, querying these nodes and, and asking them hey you know what's going on um, so uh, right uh, just let's like have a little bit of terminology here I, I'll I'll call uh, the people who are actually applying transactions to the database I'll call them processors, OK, because they're like processing transactions. Um, then you have full nodes who are really fully verifying that the processors are, are doing the correct thing. Uh, and then you have uh, you know, what we'll call end users who are, in practice, uh, often just delegating trust to these uh, uh, people who are actually looking what's going on um, without doing checking for themselves. So you know, this kind of raises the question, OK, like, yeah, there are these, these full nodes and, and these end users who aren't full nodes, but you know, what, what's the deal there? Why, why can't everyone just be a full node? Well, <laughs> let's, let's look what it, you know, what it means to be a full node these days. So uh, you know, in, in the beginning of a cryptocurrency, things aren't so bad. Things are very small. Uh, transaction throughput, it's very low. You, you're, you're happy. You, know, you can just look at the, 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 your little blockchain and download it, and, and it's, it's very nice. But, you know, uh, you let a few years go by, and uh, a giant industry springs up around you, and people start using the cryptocurrency, and suddenly there's hundreds of gigabytes of, of, of transactions going on that you need to check. So, uh, you know, this is what your full node, so what can you do but check these transactions? And you march, and you march, and you march, and, and finally you get to the end. You're, you're very old. Uh, probably it was a, a misspent life, and uh, I, I don't know, maybe you should have studied poetry or, or, or something like that instead. So um, uh, right, Th that's, that's really a bummer. So OK, uh, wh what this means is, it, you know, what, what is the kind of problem here? Well, what this means is because you have to become an old person, uh, you know, spend your whole life to, to, become a, to really validate the blockchain, in practice, many user, end users do no validation at all. This is just you know, for the plain reason that being a full node, it, fully validating requires, uh, pr it has pretty high resource requirements, let's put it like that. It's uh, really something that's intensive to run on a computer. I don't know if anyone's tried it. it it's, it's a real pain in the butt. It, it, depending on your blockchain, it can take like days to weeks to actually sync. Um, and it's impossible to run on, on a mobile phone. So uh, what do people do? They delegate trust to third parties, uh, either other full nodes, uh, 
you know, in the case of online wallets like Coinbase or something, or to miners, which is like what Litecoin is too. So what we would like is, is some way around this. We, we would like some way of being convinced of the current state uh, without necessarily having to see the history of that state, right? So uh, ex existing cryptocurrencies have this problem that in order to be convinced, you know, I have X amount of money, you have Y amount of money, you can just see the entire history uh, of transactions, which sort of explains that state, right? The entire history of blocks. So uh, m maybe, maybe you don't really need to see the entire history, right? I mean, maybe there's some uh, magical cryptography or something which would make it so you wouldn't have to see that history uh, to still be convinced uh, that such a history exists, okay? Uh, right, so just to you know, put a, f a, f a finer point on it, um, the, the verification mechanism of, of existing cryptocurrencies has this, this inherent silliness, which is the size of, of the proof that the current state is valid grows linearly with the number of transactions. It's as if every time you wanted to know how much money you had, or every time you wanted to spend a dollar, you had to check the entire history of, of how that dollar had been spent, right? So you're like, okay, time for me to spend some, send, spend some money or, or know that I've received some money. Uh, well, let me first think about this. Okay, so you know, I got it from, from, from this person at the store, and you know, oh, they got it uh, uh, as change from, uh, from lunch that day, and well, oh, that person, you know, they got it from their boss, and you know, that person's boss, well, they also had a boss, and so that's where they got that money, and oh, you know, that boss ultimately got that money from, well, I don't know, one of their employees or something, and uh, that person, oh, and so on and so on and so on, right? You don't want to hear me talk about this all day. It's very boring. So uh, this is a, a bad verification mechanism. Well, what I'll call bad, I mean, let's say it's inefficient. Um, how, do we, how do we solve this problem? How, how do we come up with a, a better verification mechanism uh, where you don't have to see the entire history of something to, to know a history of a coin to know that, you know, really it's a coin. Okay, so we want, uh, we, what we want, let, shall we say, is some kind of uh, way to certify that someone had already checked the history for us, like some kind of certificate, okay? So uh, if you would like a, an analogy, if someone is familiar with such business things, imagine you wanted to invest in a business, uh, but you didn't want to look through their whole financial history. Well, one thing that people do is they get an auditor uh, to do it for you and to produce a kind of audited financial statement, okay? So you can think that, that w what will be happening in Coda is something very similar to this. There's someone who is producing some kind of audit, audited statement or some kind of certificate that indeed, uh, you know, someone else had done the work of checking and, and it was very good. What's the upshot here? Well, it's a lot easier to check, uh, the idea is it's a lot easier to check an audited statement than to do re do redo the work of looking through the finances for yourself. Okay, so, uh, what exactly is this kind of magical certificate? Well, it's not magical, actually. Um, uh, they're called ZK Snarks. Probably some people heard about them. Who heard about ZK Snarks in their lives? Oh, that's so, that's so great, many people. So, uh, that's great, uh, but let me mm, say what they are anyway. So, uh, ZK Snarks are, are these kind of unforgeable certificates. It's a really amazing cryptographic primitive. Um, they're uh, a kind of way, a certificate for proving that you ran a certain computation correctly, okay? So what's cool about them? Well, what are some things that are cool about them? Number one, they're tiny. So this is what the S in snark stands for. It stands for succinct. You know, succinct meaning small, I don't know, short, to the point, something like that. So uh, they're tiny, so they're, they're around a kilobyte. I mean, it sort of depends exactly, but you know, roughly speaking. Um, they're really easy to check. This is also kind of succinctness. They take on the order of a few milliseconds to actually check. Um, and, and they're really versatile. So you can, you can use them to certify the correctness of any computation. It's not something special about transactions. It's really any computation. So uh, this is kind of the, the amazing thing about it. They're tiny and easy to check no matter how complicated the computation is, OK? So you can think, for example, that uh, humanity wants to run a computation. But the computation, this is a great example from, from this paper of, uh, it's an early paper on, on basically snarks, although he doesn't call them that, of Valiant um, from 2008, um, or maybe 2009. And uh, basically he says, okay, imagine humanity wants to run a computation for a thousand years. Well, a thousand years is a long time. Probably there's gonna be some regime change in there, and uh, well, who knows who's really watching the computer, and, and so on. Uh, you, if you're a baby born at the end of the thousand years, who, assumedly the person on behalf of whom this computation was done, uh, you'd like some way to know that the computation actually was run correctly, uh, even though this all happened 
before your life, you know, during medieval times or, or, or whatever. So uh, the cool thing about snarks is, is actually they let you do this. You can run a computation for a thousand years. At the end, you spit out a little snark. And the baby, they, you know, it's a very easy to check thing, so even a baby can do it. And they wake up and, and they check it and, and they're happy and, and they can, uh, you know, be confident that the, the milk they're getting is good milk or whatever. So um, uh, th th that's kind of an amazing thing about snarks. So uh, to me, that's very magical. I don't know if other people think it is. Think about it. Like, someone can do something complicated and you don't have to trust them, right? You can just somehow be convinced really quickly. Okay, it's cool. Okay, so maybe it's kind of obvious by now how this is going to be used in Coda, but uh, let's let let's let's examine it anyway. So, okay, well, updating a blockchain, or or perhaps we should say updating the database of accounts, it's some kind of computation, right? Of course, I mean the computer is doing it. Uh, Snarks, as we said, are very versatile; they can certify any computation. So, uh, we can have processors in our blockchain network produce Snarks, which certify that they're updating the blockchain correctly, right? And now, instead of end users having to check the blockchain themselves, what they do is, is they check these snarks, okay? And, and, and that's, that's really it. So um, uh, remember, the certificate is tiny and easy to check, so that's great, we win. You don't have to download the whole blockchain, you just have to get this little certificate instead. Um, let's dive in a little bit. Oh, I should say, this essentially gives you a full node level of security, you know, you, you download this thing, which is really just as good as having the entire blockchain yourself, uh, but it's only kilobytes, so you don't have to download uh, the entire transaction history. You didn't care about the entire transaction history. You just cared that it existed. Okay, so let's, uh, you know, try and make it more precise and try and understand on, on a more uh, in-depth level how, how this actually works, because it's actually quite interesting and uses a very interesting technique, um, which uh, I hope you'll like and I hope you'll go and learn more about because it's, it's just very cool. So uh, our first attempt will be basically to replace each block. Probably people uh, know basics of how cryptocurrencies work, or raise your hand if yes. Yeah, I feel it's kind of makes sense. It's this conference, so. Um, okay, so our first attempt will be basically to replace each block with a single little snark, okay? So if you think about it, you know, we have our processor. They're producing, uh, their, but what we have them do is we'll have them produce their snark as in tandem, you know, with block with producing a block, as they update the database of accounts, uh, and uh, they, you know they make a snark, which which proves sort of I updated this the database correctly as I was supposed to, uh, and you know we take a look at the completed certificate. You can see maybe this this it's a self, like all self portraits. You know the the processor comes off a little bit better in the in the snark than they than they do in real life. But okay, well we'll have them you know, let them have their vanity. Um, and, and basically what we get is a certificate which says, uh, I know a block which when applied to database one, you know, all the transactions in it are correct, have good signatures and so on, there are no double spends, and uh, after applying this block, uh, the database will be in state two. Okay, does it make sense, roughly speaking? Or simply, just you know, for linguistic purposes, because it's easier to say, uh, you can get from d db1 to db2. It's just easier to say that. So, uh, and I'm going to be saying this a lot. So, uh, remember, it's a snark, so it's just about a kilobyte. So, very cool. So, it used to be a whole block, now it's just a kilobyte. Cool. Well, uh, what is it? Let's kind of think. You know, what, how how have, how have things changed for the end user in this world? Well, uh, the end user maybe they know that that the current state is db1. A new block comes out. And what they get is just a certificate saying, you can get from DB1 to DB2, okay? And if they wanted to know their, uh, their balance in DB2, they could get a Merkle path uh, into DB2 to check their balance. Does that make sense? We, we know about Merkle paths and so on. Yeah, roughly speaking. Okay, cool. So um, that, that's cool, I guess. I mean, they can be assured of their balance uh, that it's $17 without, or 17 codas, without having to see the, the diff between database one and database two. Okay, well, uh, what if they didn't know DB1 was valid yet, right? Maybe, maybe they didn't know that was the current state before this block came out. Well, you can notice that, first of all, you can sort of chain certificates. So if you have a certificate, a snark, saying you can get from DB1, oh, just to be clear, I often don't say ZK snark, I often just say snark, because um, Z, 
really the ZK isn't actually so important in this context. It's mostly the snark. <laughs> so okay. So um, anyway, so it, it, uh, let's notice that you can kind of chain certificates together. So if you have a certificate saying you can get from DB1 zero to DB1, and one saying you can get from DB1 to DB2, and one saying you can get from DB2 to DB3, and one saying you can get from DB3 to DB4, well. This altogether sort of constitutes a sort of certificate that you can get from DB0 to DB4, right? You see what I mean? If I, if I just send you this chain of proofs, you would be convinced that you can get from DB0 to DB4. In other words, there is a valid sequence of blocks going from uh, DB0 to DB4. Uh, so you could think, well, oh, all right, let's just use a sequence of snarks instead of, instead of blocks. Uh, uh, probably the sequence of snarks is smaller than the sequence of blocks, so seems like a win. Uh, but you know we can go further because ultimately this doesn't solve the fundamental problem of, of linear growth, right? The blockchain would still be li growing linearly with time um, and number of transactions. It would be nice maybe if we could somehow solve this fundamental problem of linear growth to make it really a sustainable thing. It's never going to get get bigger, uh, and uh, yeah. So. Uh, this, is, this will be our, our second attempt, and this is what code actually does, which is to use one snark to stand in for the entire blockchain. Okay? So this builds on, on the first attempt in the following way. Uh, it uses this idea of recursive composition. So this is a really cool technique, and I encourage everyone to go read this paper of Valiant and the later uh, paper, like uh, papers of Alessandro Chiesa, Ron Tromer, and Ali Mansasun, and others. Um, it's uh, very cool. So. What's the basic idea here? Here, what's the basic insight? Well, okay, checking a snark, the process of checking that proof that you got, right? That's a computation. Co snarks can certify any computation, so the computation of checking a snark, that itself can be certified with a snark. Maybe it's not exactly clear why do you want to do that, but let's see. So basically what it means is we can sort of chain multiple snarks together to get one snark that stands in for all of them. The process of, of checking two snarks, that's a computation, so we can make one snark that says, oh yeah, I checked two snarks. Does that make sense? And so we reduce the number of snarks that, that we had by two when we did that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, pictorially, uh, before we had these two proofs, right? One said, you can get from DB0 to DB1. One said, you can get from DB1 to DB2. We checked each of them. The process of checking the two of them, that's a computation. So we certify that with a snark, okay? And which says, I know two snarks, and I checked both of them, and at the beginning it was zero, and at the end it was two. Okay? Does it make sense? So it's a snark, so this is still just a kilobyte. And, and great, we, we can, uh, we, we've you know, halved the, the size of our data, and, and that's really great. So, uh, you know, I mean, we just keep doing this. So uh, we, we have a proof that says you can get from zero to two. We have another one that says you can get from DB2 to DB4. Again, we check both of those, that's computation, so we can certify that with a snark, and we get a snark that says, you can go from zero to four. Cool, right? So uh, now, the idea of Coda is, is that you're, you're doing this continually, actually, for the whole blockchain, and so uh, there's always this one proof which sort of stands in for the entire history of the blockchain, and then what things look like for the end user in this world? Well, they first download this one kilobyte blockchain snark, which says, you know, you can reach state four or state 40,000 or whatever, whatever the current state is, from the genesis state. And they download, I, you know, I actually way estimated the, the size of this Merkle path. I said 20 kilobytes, but it's actually, a, <laughs> I didn't update my slides, it's actually a lot less. So then you download this some number of kilobytes, small number of kilobytes, at the most 20, um, into state four to get uh, your account information. And, and so, you know, you can, sorry. And so you can be convinced, I have $17 without having to, uh, to download really much data at all, just you know, a couple kilobytes. Um, so that, that's, that's the idea. So uh, what's the upshot? Well, uh, the Coda wallet, it syncs from nothing to essentially a full node level of security with a few kilobytes and, and a few milliseconds. Um, and uh, from a scalability perspective, it's a huge win because you know, when people usually talk about scalability, they're, they're thinking about increasing throughput. But uh, there, there's no attention given to the, the fact that increasing throughput just really centralizes verification. So what we really need is a way to increase throughput without harming uh, the, the centralization of verification. And, and that's, uh, that's what Coda, Coda lets you do. Instead of having to check you know, the, the terabytes of data that are pouring in each week of transactions, 
Um, you just need to check uh, this little snark. Uh, and okay, so what, what's really cool is you know uh, we we actually have a test network running now. Um, and uh, if you go to if you go to this web, well maybe I guess everyone can go at once. It doesn't matter. But uh, you know depending on how on how on how uh, I guess on how fast your phone is, um, we have. Uh, uh, here, I'm, I'm going to it right now. We actually have a Coda client running uh, in the browser, and it even works on your phone. So I don't know if people can see, but so it's verifying a snark in my phone. Shaking and shaking, it's checking. Oh, it should turn green any moment. Let's see. Mm, <laughs> it's taking a while. Oh, it turned green. Okay, so that, oh, a new block came in. <laughs> it's, it's verifying again. So uh, basically, there's a snark. It, it downloads into your browser. There, it just checked it. it tells me. You know, here's the current state hash. The current length of the blockchain is 44,298, and here's that little Merkle path in, into my account um, that tells me, you know, the account balance and so on. So uh, please, you know, visit us here, check it out. Um, we're, uh, you know, actively looking for people to participate in our test network. Um, so sign up, and um, you know, uh, we look forward to hearing from you. That's all I got. So. Should we, uh, I guess we'll do questions. I, I guess I can just take questions. Okay. I'll go in, I'll pick randomly. Okay. So, so uh, someone shout out a number? 20. Okay. So, uh, is there someone back there? Okay. Is there anyone else back there? No? <laughs> okay. I guess I'll take your question. Uh, which snark construction are we using? So uh, right now we're using the Groth Mahler 2017 snark um, with a pair of uh, elliptic curves. Like, uh, it's this, these M and T curves. Yeah. So you, you do the kind of MPC that uh, they did for like the most recent Zcash sapling upgrade. Yep. Oh, may, may, maybe I'll let's see. Okay. Sorry, I'm just jumping around. Right. Say that again. Ah, okay. So uh, I, yeah. So uh, th they run a consensus mechanism. It's a proof of stake consensus mechanism. Um, in terms of how the proofs actually get produced, basically, uh, the. In some sense, the block producers, the processors themselves, are responsible for producing the proofs um, for each transaction. But uh, in practice, you know, we have we've basically built out a system for uh, so that any node of the network can kind of contribute to to which proofs have to be done for sort of, sort of pending transactions. Um, it's a little complicated, so I would say it's a bit out of scope for right now. But I'm happy to t tell you about it out during the break, or uh, there may be. I think that we're, we'll be putting up a talk actually that kind of explains it uh, sometime later this week. So yeah. Uh, I guess talk to Alessandro Chiesa. I don't, I don't know. So I mean, so well, okay. So uh, the best resource for learning about zk snarks. Well, you know, uh, I, I maybe read read libsnark source code. Uh, re read the papers. I guess I don't know. It, it sort of depends. It sort of depends how much background. You know, I was a I was a I was a PhD student before this, so it sort of depends how, how much wh where you're coming in, I guess. But I, please talk to me, and 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 you know, we we can. We can, I, I'm happy to kind of, with anyone, please come talk to me and I'm happy to say, oh, you know, depending on kind of what you know and so on, say like, oh, here's a great URL to start at or here's a great place to start at or, or, or whatever. Yeah, there's actually it, it turns <laughs> in, in practice there's actually there's actually five, but yeah, yeah. But it, th that's sort of technical details, but yeah, there's actually five. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe back there. So I I see I see. It. Okay. Uh, 
Yep. So uh, right. So right now, you know, right now uh, our alpha test is out. Um, hopefully, sometime in the, in the next in the next few months, we'll have our, our beta test net, which will be you know feature complete, and then main net sometime in the first half of next year. <laughs> the furthest one. <laughs> yeah, so so maybe. Um, basically, the, the problem is that uh, to do this kind of recursive composition, you need to use very particular elliptic curves. Um, and it, for technical reasons, it would be super hard to do it to do it with the curves that they use for Ethereum. So, or really any cryptocurrency. Like these aren't curves that you would select unless you were specifically trying to do this. Um, and and verifying, uh, it's a little technical. I, I'm happy to explain deta details offline as well. Yeah, maybe we can just go really quickly in this cluster. Yeah. Uh, oh, what features have we, have we had to add? Lots of lots of features. So, well, you know, we need to implement all the elliptic curve arithmetic. We actually needed to modify the uh, snark construction since they were implemented in libsnark quite a bit. Um, the, uh, again, I'm happy to, to tell you exactly what, but uh, it should all be open source soon, also, so we can all see. And anyway. Say again? Yes, so, uh, you know, when I said DB0, but actually there's also consensus information, so it, which essentially says the length of the chain, so you can select the longest chain amongst multiple forks. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so we're planning on using the same MPC that they did for the recent Zcash protocol upgrade. Um, so, you know, there will be dozens of participants, and uh, so it's, they've implemented something quite scalable, so. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, coordinating a few dozen people for, you know, uh, for a, a short amount of time, it's not, it's not so bad. Oh, are th is, uh, does anyone have questions back there? No. Okay. Oh, I, I ran out of my time. Okay. I guess, I guess I'll be done now. Or maybe there was built-in question time. I don't know. It, it, is an organizer here? Oh, I should wrap up. Okay, cool. I'm done. <laughs>